This is a case about Carly Madison Gregg. Carly Gregg has been charged with murdering her mother, Ashley Smiley, and attempting to murder her stepfather, Heath Smiley. She's also been charged with tampering with physical evidence for removing a camera and hiding it that captured a portion of the events. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll hear testimony throughout the next few days during this case. You'll hear about some secret life that Carly lived. You'll hear that Carly had a secret boyfriend. You'll hear that Carly had a secret iPod, that she had secret social media accounts that she was using to communicate with people on this iPod when her parents had taken her phone away. You'll hear that she was secretly cutting on her thigh using a, a knife. You'll hear that she secretly had burner phones, phones her mom and stepdad didn't know about that she was using. You'll hear that she had secret weed vape pens and that she before going to school at times. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not why we're here though. We're here because of what she did on March the 19th, 2024 that you'll hear that Carly is the daughter of Ashley Smiley, the stepdaughter of Heath Smiley, that Heath and Ashley were married sometime in 2022. I'm sorry, 2020. You'll hear that Carly's, Carly's Bible has not been in her life for about a year or more, that he was a known drug user, had violent and angry tendencies. You'll hear that back in January, Carly got in trouble with her parents when they found this iPod that they got onto her for, for using these secret accounts and for communicating with people. You'll hear that around the same time that she had this boyfriend they found out about and that they asked her to break up with him and that later uh, they found out she was still seeing this boy. You'll hear at some point that Carly got in trouble uh, at school. She was cheating. She'd found the answers to a test and, and gave them to the other students. You'll hear that all of this was happening about the same time that they found out Carly was cutting on her legs. You'll hear that as a concerned parent, what they did was they got Carly in therapy. She was being treated for anxiety and stress. You'll hear that she continued smoking those vape pens even after in therapy. So now, now I want to take you to the real reason we're here and what you'll hear. We're here because on March the 19th, 2024, Carly rode to school with her mother that day. Ashley was a school teacher at Northwest Rankin, taught geometry. Carly was in the 10th grade. You'll hear that that morning, she got in a little altercation with one of her friends, cussed him out. But what you'll hear, ladies and gentlemen, from the, from the testimony of this, this friend is that he was so worried, so worried about Carly's use of smoking marijuana and so worried about her being high and so worried about her having these burner phones that her mom didn't know about that he felt, he felt compelled to tell Miss Ashley Smiley that day. Ladies and gentlemen, after the incident with Carly that morning, he, you'll hear that, that he gets in touch with another friend and he's like, hey, you got to keep her distracted so I can go tell Miss Smiley what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, this friend cared about Carly. He was like, I, I got I to gotta intervene. I got to tell her. I'm afraid of what's happening. You'll hear from him that he did, in fact, tell Miss Smiley. That after fourth block that day, he goes and he tells Miss Smiley, hey, hey, Carly has got these vapes. She's got this phone. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll hear then that Carly Gregg rides in the car home with her mother from school to their house. They leave school sometime after 3.30. They get home a little before 4. You'll hear that when they get inside the house, it's only their two dogs, Ashley Smiley and Carly Gregg. Immediately, Carly goes and lets the dogs out. You'll hear testimony that Ashley then goes into Carly's room. You'll hear that while Ashley is in her room, that Carly's still outside. At some point, Ashley finds uh, what law enforcement believe to be the four boxes that contain vape pens. Testimony will be that we believe she carried them from Carly's room to her bedroom, went back to searching Carly's room. 
The evidence will show that almost immediately upon Carly coming inside the house, that she walks straight to her parents' goes straight to her mom's side of the bed and removes a 357 Magnum from under the mattress. We believe the testimony will be that then she concealed that 357 Magnum behind her back as she walked through the kitchen. She peeks her head around. We believe the testimony will show that she peeks her head around the kitchen to make sure that her mom hasn't come out of her bedroom. We believe the evidence will then show that she walked with that 357 Magnum behind her back, walked in to her own bedroom, and then three, fired three shots into her mother, killing her. We believe the testimony will then be that that very moment after she shot and killed her mother, she then hides that gun back out of the camera, walks back into that kitchen, sits down on the stool with a gun behind her, picks up her mother's cell phone, puts her mom's passcode into the phone. We believe the testimony will be that then she texts her stepdad and said something to the effect of, when will you be home, honey? Testimony will be that then she waited for him to respond. I'll be a little bit longer. She sends him a thumbs up. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe the testimony will then be that after she puts the phone back down and walks out of sight with the camera, that between the next 45 minutes or so, that the defendant reaches out to or attempts to reach out to about five or six of her friends. Some were FaceTime, some were text messages. We believe the evidence will show that during this time, she was asking them all for help, trying to get them to come over to her house. She wouldn't tell them why. We believe that one of them's going to say he even offered to call 911, and she told him no. The evidence will also be that one of these friends did, in fact, come over to help Carly that day. She didn't know why, but she knew that her friend needed help, and she went to that home. We believe the evidence will show that when that friend arrived at Carly's house, that Carly walked to the front door, asked her, are you squeamish around dead bodies? We believe the evidence will show that then she took that friend and showed her her dead mother laying on the floor. We believe the evidence will show that after that, she says, I put three in my mom and I got three more waiting for my stepdad when he gets home. We believe the evidence will show that then she tells this friend Hey, why don't you go wait outside in the backyard? My stepdad's about to be home. This friend will testify that she does go in the backyard and she hears gunshots. And the next thing she sees is Carly coming out of the back door. We believe the testimony will be that she fell out of the back, fell down coming out of the back door, gets up and tells her to run. And these two individuals, this friend and Carly, jump over the fence and run separate directions. You'll hear testimony uh, that there was a 911 call. You'll hear a frantic Heath Smiley telling the dispatcher, Oh my God, she's killed her mother. She hit me in the neck. It grazed me. She tried to kill me too. She's run off. You'll hear from law enforcement when they arrived on the scene that Carly Gregg had fled the scene. You'll hear from law enforcement that when they arrived on the scene, Ashley Smiley was very much dead in the floor in Carly's bedroom and that they found that Heath Smiley had been shot and hit in the shoulder a through and through. You're, you will hear from law enforcement that sometime after the day of the event, they learned that there was cameras involved that this home had surveillance video. You'll learn that one of those videos was turned over by the living victim, Heath Smiley, and it shows Carly Gregg and her friend jumping over the fence. And then you'll learn that there was another camera in the house on March the 19th, 2024. That Carly was hiding the gun out of sight of. 
and you'll hear that that camera was not in the kitchen when law enforcement got there and it was not in the kitchen where it should have been when Heath Smiley got there. It wasn't until some time later that that camera was discovered. Ladies and gentlemen, you will hear that Ashley Smiley's calls of death, gunshot wounds to the head. Ashley Smiley's manner of death, homicide. You will hear that Heath Smiley says, Carly Gregg is the one that shot at me. And on his 911 call, he said that she tried to kill him. You'll hear him say that he did not move that camera, the only other person living in the home. Ladies and gentlemen, you also hear from forensic scientists from the Mississippi Forensics Laboratory. You'll hear that both of Carly Gregg's hands tested positive, both the right and the left. You'll hear that the 357 Magnum that was used to kill her mother and shoot her stepfather, they took swabs. They took a swab of the trigger and they took a swab of the hammer. And you'll, you will hear that the DNA profile that matches those swabs belongs to Carly Gregg. Ladies and gentlemen, you will also hear that there were two projectiles removed from Carly Gregg's mother, Ashley Smiley. One in her brain, one in her neck. Projectiles were tested with ballistics and that those projectiles matched the 357 Magnum that Heath Smiley took out of Carly Gregg's hand that day on March the 19th, 2024. And ladies and gentlemen, at the end of this trial, after you've heard the evidence, the state will stand before you and we will ask that you murder, attempted murder, and tampering with physical evidence. Thank you, Your Honor. Does the defense wish to make its opening now or do you wish to defer? The defense will go ahead, Your Honor. Opening statement by the defense. Good afternoon. I know it's been a long morning for you all, so I will try to do this as briefly as possible. This is not a whodunit case. We know who took action on March 19th to bring about the death of Ashley Smiley and the injuries to Heath Smiley. However, this is a why case. Why did it happen? Why did this exceptional child with no history of violence, who was loved by her friends, her teachers, her parents, who had a good home life, who loved her mother, why did she shoot her mom? Why did she shoot at her stepfather? The state would like you to believe the answer to those questions don't matter, but we know better than that. The answers to those questions is why we're here today, and it's what you're here to do. We believe the evidence will show that there were three victims on March 19th, Ashley Smiley, Heath Smiley, and Carly Smiley, and Carly Gregg, that they were all three victims. We believe the evidence will show that Carly had been suffering from a mental illness that Carly was not aware on March 19th that she had a mental illness. We believe the evidence will show that Carly's parents who lived with her were not aware that Carly illness. We believe the evidence will show that Carly's close friends who saw her at school every day we're not aware that Carly was suffering from a mental illness because it's hard to look at a person and understand that they have a mental illness. It's hard to look at a person and know that they have a mental illness. That's why it's often referred to as the invisible disease. A person can exhibit symptoms of a mental illness without people necessarily knowing that they have one or other people necessarily knowing that the person has. While the events on March 19th were tragic, the events on March 19th were not intentional. The evidence will show and the testimony will show that Carly Gregg loved her mother, that Carly Gregg and her mother had a loving 
close relationship. Carly Gregg's mom loved her. In fact, her life revolved around Carly, as parents' lives often do revolve. Carly very much wanted to please her mother. Carly was an exceptional student, made a 30 on the ACT when she was 13 years old. She was the apple of her mother and her stepfather's eye. And you will understand by the conclusion of this hearing why Carly's stepfather is standing behind her. Because he knows on March 19th, there were three victims, Ashley, Heath, and Carly. The state will ask you to take your good judgment, to take your common sense, and to put it in a bucket, to put the lid on the bucket, and to toss the bucket out of this courtroom. We implore you not to do that, to retain your common sense, to retain your good judgment, and to make sure that you are listening to the evidence as it's presented because it doesn't matter how many witnesses the state puts on, their story is filled with inconsistencies because they're not telling the whole story. The evidence will not show that Carly was ever deemed dangerous by anyone. The evidence will not show that Carly ever had any desire to hurt her mother. The evidence will not show that Carly ever had any desire to hurt any person. The evidence will not show that Carly invited people over to her house to view her mom's body. What it will show is that on March 19th, a hysterical Carly called her closest friends, begging them for help, begging them to help her. The evidence will show that Carly did not recognize Heath Smiley when he got home that day. You'll hear that from him himself. The evidence will show that Carly was so terrified when Heath Smiley got home on March 19th that even after Carly left the house, Heath walked around the house with the handgun in his hand looking for an intruder because he was convinced by Carly, by how she appeared, by how she acted, he did that day, by the child he had known for years, that he was, that she was terrified, something in that house to cause that kind of terror in Carly. What the evidence will not show is that Carly had a drug problem. What the evidence will not show is that Carly and her mother had any argument on March 19th. What the evidence will not show is that Carly had any desire to hurt her stepfather. What the evidence will not show is that Ashley Smiley was angry when she left school that day, or that Ashley Smiley was upset with Carly when she left school that day, or that after they got home on March 19th, Ashley and Carly engaged in an argument. The evidence will not show that Ashley Smiley found anything in Carly's bedroom that would have caused an argument. The evidence will not show that Carly intended to hurt anyone. The evidence will not show that Carly has not grieved her mother's loss. The evidence will not show that law enforcement did their due diligence in investigating this matter. The evidence will not show that Carly was 
abusing or misusing prescription medication. The evidence will not show that Carly had was just a teenager who had a life that her parents didn't know everything about. That's called having a teenager and being a parent. The evidence will not show that Carly had ever tried to harm another person, had ever had a desire to hurt another person. The evidence will not show that Carly is a monster, that Carly was a difficult child, a troubled child, or a deranged child. The evidence will not show that Carly Gregg does not deserve you to return a verdict of not guilty. Now, the evidence will show that Carly had a family history of mental illness. In fact, it was well documented. The evidence will show that Carly was concerned that something was wrong with her. She wrote journal entries about it. The evidence will show that Carly was afraid she had the same mental illness that her father had. Carly, the evidence will show that Carly's mother had worried for years about Carly having the same mental illness that her father had. The evidence will show that Carly was very emotionally tied in to her mother's emotions and that Carly never wanted her mother to worry about her. The evidence will show that Carly was scared of how her mother would react to the knowledge that if Carly had, if Carly had the same mental illness that her father had. That doesn't sound like a child that doesn't love her mom. And that doesn't sound like a child who has any intention of hurting her mother. The state would like you to believe that it's normal for her to go home from school one day with their mother, who they love, and shoot her, but nothing's wrong. It was just marijuana. Or because she was on social media and her mom didn't want her on social media. But again, we ask you to retain your common sense and to retain your good judgment because we know that just doesn't make sense. And at the end of this trial, if the state's case still leaves you feeling like their version of events just doesn't make sense, then you must return a verdict of not guilty. The state may call its first witness. Thank you, Mr. Kevin Call, Your Honor. Your Honor, maybe we should let him approach him. Yes. Yeah, my foot went all the way down.
May I proceed, Your Honor? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Would you please introduce yourself to the jury? My name is Kevin Collins. And Mr. Collins, where do you work? I work Rankin County Sheriff's Department Dispatch. All right. Um, and you say dispatch. Explain to us just a little bit about what dispatch is and what you do as part of your job responsibilities. Basically, we take all the incoming calls from the county and the community, even some from the cities for emergency situations, and we dispatch proper personnel, whether it be medical, fire, law enforcement. And how long have you worked for Rankin County Sheriff's Office in, in that role? I started in the Sheriff's Department February 7, 2022. Okay. And before February of 2022, did you have any experience uh, working in that role in any other, um, for any other departments or agencies? Yes, I did. Okay. Can you tell the ladies and gentlemen about that? I started with Hines County Sheriff's Department in June of 2007. Uh, I worked two years at the city of Flowood. And then I worked uh, Yazoo County E911, a couple years at Mendenhall Police Department, and then the last six years before I came to Rankin County, I was a supervisor at the City of Florence. And you talked about some of your job duties and responsibilities. Um, as part of your responsibilities and duties, do you dispatch fire services? Yes, we do fire services. Do you dispatch police? Yes. Do you, uh, EMTs? That is done through PAPR. Okay. Um, who contacts Pafford in the event that EMTs are needed? We transfer the caller. In the perfect situation, we transfer the caller to Pafford so they can ask the proper questions. Okay. Um, and I understand that over the years, maybe some of the training requirements have changed, but whenever you became a dispatcher, what were the training requirements in order to become a dispatcher? Uh Within the first year, you had to go through a 40-hour basic certification class plus an eight-hour ride-along with each department that you dispatch, whether it be fire, law enforcement, medical. Uh, in every continuous year, you have to do 48 hours in six different subjects for every three years okay. to recertify it. So did you do those initial requirements back uh, whenever you started? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you ride along with those different agencies that you dispatched? Yes, I did. All right. And have you kept up your continuing education hours um, throughout the years? Yes, sir, I have. And are uh, who are you certified through? Who keeps up with that? Uh, Board of Standards and Training through the state of Mississippi. Okay. And you said you've worked at uh, Rankin County since February of 2022, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, do you guys work in shifts, or how, how does your schedule work? We do. Uh, my shift is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., and we do a 3-2 split, which is like one week we'll work Monday, Tuesday, and then the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then the next week we will work Wednesday and Thursday. And it just alternates the following weeks. Okay. How many dispatchers work at a time for Rankin County? There's four of us at a time on duty. And how do you guys handle calls that come in to, say, 911? If it's an emergency situation, then, you know, we've got this thing where we'll snap our fingers and somebody else will pick up on the call. That way one of us can get all the information we can while the other one's dispatching it out. So is it is it possible that more than one person can be listening to the call at the same time? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and I want to take you back to uh, March 19th of this year, March 19th, 2024. Um, were you employed as a dispatcher with Rankin County at that time? Yes, I was. And, and that was as a dispatcher? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, were you uh, working that day? Yes, I was. Do you re uh, recall receiving a call from an individual by the name of Mr. Heath Smiley that day. Yes, I do. And what was the reason for Mr. Smiley calling 911? He called because he had been shot. Uh, at first he said he had grazed the neck. Uh, once during the middle of the call, he then stated that his wife was also shot dead on the floor. And I uh, continued to talk to him until deputies arrived on scene. And um, do you recall the address that Mr. Smiley was calling from? Yes, it was 214 Ashton's Way. Okay. Is that address located in Rankin County? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, 
How, uh, Mr. Collins, how would you describe uh, Mr. Smiley's demeanor whenever you first picked up um, the phone uh, that day? He was very distraught. Uh, at first, I thought I was speaking with a female. Uh, it wasn't until I found out his name that I knew it was a male. And then I just continued to get further information from him, what I could. He couldn't even... The first, when I asked him the address at the first time, he couldn't even tell me the address. I went off of the 911, which gave us, I believe, 215 Ashton Way. And then later on during the call, I verified with him what his address was. Okay. Um, and you mentioned that, that Mr. Smiley uh, stated that, that he was grazed and that, and that um, his wife was dead. Did he tell you anything else? Um, he also advised that his stepdaughter had shot him and that he had taken the gun from her and she ran out the back door wearing, I believe, a gray shirt and jeans and went over the back fence. I got a description from him that we could pass along to our officers and that's most of it. Except he did also advise that she had uh, been going through some things and was on medication trying to deal with some stuff. Okay. Um, when someone calls 911, are those calls recorded? Yes, they are. And uh, do you know um, whether that whether or not those calls are kept in the normal course of business by the Rain County Sheriff's Office? Yes, they are. Okay. Um, do you know whether your call with Mr. Smiley on March 19, 2024 was recorded? Yes, it was. Um, and do you know whether or not that call was kept in the normal course and scope of uh, business by the Rain County Sheriff's Office? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, have you listened to that call before? Yes, I have. May I approach, Your Honor? Mr. Collins, I, I handed you an item. Um, do you recognize that? Yes, sir. It's a disc of the recording. And how do you, how do you know that's what that is? Because I initialed and dated it. Okay. Have you watched or listened to that call before? Yes, I have. And you said there are some initials on there. Are those your initials? Yes, sir. They are. Um, whenever you listened to that call, did it appear to be altered or edited in any way? No, it did not. Okay. Um, Your Honor, at this point, we would uh, move this disc in as State's Exhibit 1. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. Be admitted as one all purposes. And Mr. Collins, you mentioned that you uh, that you listened to this. Is this a, a complete a complete call uh, recording of the call with Mr. Smiley that day? Yes, it is from beginning to end. Okay, um, Your Honor, may I publish this for the jury, please? Yes. Sir.
hit me neck a little bit. I'm okay. Okay, so did it graze your neck? Yes, sir. All right. And what's her name? Carly Gregg. Carly Gregg? You still have a gun on her? She ran. You took it from her and she ran? Yes, sir. She, she was screaming something at me. I couldn't understand. I locked the door. She's out.
No further questions, Your Honor. Does the defense wish to use the uh, projector for cross examination? The defense has no cross examination for this witness, Your Honor. All right. You may step down, sir. Are you going to use that with your next witness? Yes, sir. Before we go to the next witness, any jurors need a restroom break? All right. State may call its next witness. Uh, State calls Deputy Hunter Lewis, Your Honor. Swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you find. Have a seat. Just show up to the microphone. Do you understand that you're now under oath and your answers will be sworn answers of the penalty of perjury? Yes, sir, I do. All right, you may proceed. Thank you, Uh Good afternoon, sir. Would you please introduce yourself to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury? Hunter Lewis. All right, uh, Hunter, and where do you work? Rank County Sheriff's Office. All right, and, and what role do you work at the Sheriff's Office? Patrol. All right, and as a patrol deputy at uh, Rankin County, what do you do on a daily basis? Uh, I answer 911 calls and assist the public when they call for assistance. Okay. Um, how long have you been in law enforcement? Anywhere other than uh, Rankin County, or have you been? Places. Okay, where else have you worked? I uh, worked at Hines County, Flowood. Okay. Um, and uh, where did you start? Did you start at Hines County? Yes. Okay. Uh, what kind of training did you go through in order to become a certified uh, police officer? I uh, went to Mississippi Law Enforcement Officer Training Academy. Okay. And approximately how long is that training? Twelve weeks. All right. Um, as, as a patrol deputy now at Rankin County, um, do you complete any kind of ongoing training or continuing education? I do. And tell us just a little bit about what kind of training you go through. We have to do annual training yearly throughout the year. Okay. And what kind of topics do that, do, does that annual training cover? Just different aspects of the job. Okay. Um, is it related to patrol or is it investigations? Tell us just a little bit about it. Um, patrol. Okay. Um, now, uh, we're. Let's, I want to take you back to March of this year, specifically March 19th, 2024. Um, were you employed as a patrol deputy at Rankin County on March 19th, 2024? Yes, sir, I was. All right. Um, do you recall receiving a call for service uh, at 214 Ashton Way? Yes, sir, I do. Okay. Is that in a subdivision or where is that? It is. What subdivision is that? Some Farmington Station, I hope. Okay. Is that in Rankin County? Yes, sir, it is. All right. Did you respond um, to 214 Ashton Way? Yes, sir, I did. Uh, whenever you arrived at 214 Ashton Way on March 19, 2024, were there any other law enforcement personnel there whenever you arrived? No, sir. So were you the first one there? Yes, sir, that's correct. Um, whenever you arrived on scene, that day on March 19th uh, at 214 National Way. Just tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what you observed whenever you got there. Uh, when I arrived, there was the door was locked, but I could hear somebody screaming and highly upset on the inside of the house. Okay. Um, did you later find out who was inside the house? Yes, sir, I did. Who was that? This, he Smiley. Um, at any point, did Mr. Smiley come outside or tell us what happened next? Um, yes, I knocked on the door several times, announced who it was, and then he opened the door. Can you describe Mr. Smiley's um, demeanor that you personally observed? He was hysterical, highly upset, crying. Okay. Um, whenever he came out, uh, tell us what happened next. He um, fell to the ground on the porch just outside the front door, 
once and then this I asked him where his wife was, he said that she was inside on the floor. What what information I'm sorry to interrupt you on Deputy Lewis, uh what information, if any, had you been provided uh by dispatch? Um just advised that uh, been two people shot inside the residence. Okay. So you stated that Mr. Um Smiley came outside, uh, then and and you you spoke to him briefly. Then what happened next? Um, I, after I spoke to him, I went inside to check on the other party. Better. Okay. Um, and then once did you uh, do anything to Miss um, Smiley whenever you encountered her inside? I did. I initially checked for a pulse and. I couldn't feel the pulse, so I lift the towel to see what kind of um, see what had happened, and that's when I noticed she had been shot in the face. Okay, you mentioned a towel. Well, tell us, um, we haven't heard that before, so tell us uh, what what are, what are you talking about? You, you into the bedroom. She was laying flat on her back with her arms crossed, with a towel over her face. How were her arms crossed, if you recall? Across the top of her chest. Okay. Um, and did you later confirm the identity of the female um, inside? I did. And who was that? Ashley Smiley. Okay. <clears throat> After um, checking Miss Smiley's pulse, uh, what did you do then? Um... Then went back outside. I dispatched, radio dispatched, and asked them to have medical come on in. And went back outside to where Mr. Smith. Um, whenever you got back outside, were there any other law enforcement officers there at that time? There. Okay, and who was that? Deputy Dustin Smith. Okay. And once you returned back outside, uh, and encounter Mr. Smiley again on the front porch. What happened after that? He told me who had shot him and uh, and gave me a description of what she was wearing. And who did he tell you shot him? His step. By her name? Carla Gray. Okay. And what did he tell you she was wearing? Um, she was wearing. I can't recall exactly what he is. Okay. Um, and then after that, what did you do next with that information? Uh, radio to the units that was responding. Did uh, Mr. Smiley ever say anything about a gun or anything like that? He did. Okay. Um, tell us about that. He advised that the gun that was used was laying on the counter and there was one live around in the cylinder. Did he uh, say what type of gun it was? Uh, 357. Okay. And then what'd you do uh, after that, if anything? I let the other officers know that about the weapon and then had the crime scene taped off. Okay. Um, and so how long did you stay out there that day? Until I was took possession of Miss Molly. Okay. Um, and after, uh, at some point, did investigators get there? What happened with that? When they arrived on the scene, they started taking photographs and processing the scene. Okay. Um, now, Deputy Lewis, uh, as a patrol deputy with Rankin County, um, do you wear a body-worn camera? Yes, sir, I do. And tell us, uh, you know, what does, when do you activate your camera? Anytime dealing with the public. Okay. Um, on March 19th, 2024, whenever you responded to 214 Ashaway, were you wearing body-worn camera that day? Uh, yes, sir, I was. Um, and uh, did your body-worn camera, in fact, record, did it record uh, what happened whenever you arrived there on the scene? Yes, sir, it did. Do you know whether that body-worn camera footage is kept by the Rankin County Sheriff's Office? Yes, sir, it is. Um, since Mar March 19, 2024, have you reviewed that footage? Yes, sir, I have. Okay. May I approach, on.
Deputy Lewis, I handed you an object, Dom. Do you recognize that? Yes, sir, I do. And what is that? It's a copy of my body cam footage. How do you know that's what that is? Because I initialed it after I watched it. Okay, so you watched that and initialed it? Yes, sir, I did. All right. All right. Um, that the footage that you watched on there, is that a true and accurate depiction of what your body cam recorded on March 19, 2024 at 214 Ashton Way? Yes, sir, it is. Had that video been edited or altered in any way? No, sir. All right. Um, Your Honor, at this time we would uh, move this in as uh, State's Exhibit 2. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. Be admitted without objection, S.T. And Your Honor, I would ask for permission to post this to the jury. All right. Thank <laughs> you. 
catch from you. What is her name again? Carly. C-A-R-L-Y. C-A-R-L-Y. Carly Madison. Greg. G-R-E-G-G.
Young can I uh, you try to take a picture of that so y'all can have all this information? I'm just gonna get all this information from him. I don't need that. Okay, alright. I got Reverend gonna start this for me. Okay.
the mother, I mean the father, to because he, he stepped there too. Okay. Oh, come on, come on. Yeah. yeah. Deputy Lewis, um, I heard a call out there. Um, they said that uh, that they got her at 1735. Is that 535 p.m.? Yes, sir, it is. Okay. And um, did what did you know about whether or not um, custody at that time? I'm sorry, say that again? What, what did they mean whenever they said that they took her into custody at 1735? They took her into custody at 535. And do you know who, who that was that they were talking about? Yes, sir. It was one of our introduction units. Okay. And who did they take into custody? Carly Gregg. Okay. And um, I think the video goes on a little bit longer, um, but I think your testimony was earlier that you stayed out there until the coroner showed up. Is that correct? That is. And what type of things were you doing until the coroner showed up? Just help processing the scene and... Okay. Um, court indulgence.
two more brief questions, Deputy Lewis. Um, I heard you use two, uh, I guess, in the police world, what they call 10 codes. I'm on there, and I think you said one was 10-2 and one was 10-7. Can you explain to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what that means? 10-2 means okay, and 10-7 means deceased. Okay. And who were you referring to as 10-2 in the video? He Smiley. And who was 10-7? The mother, Ashley Smiley. No further questions, Your Honor. Cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Do you intend to use the video? No, Your Honor. All right. If you would, Mr. Lovingson, if you would, he's not going to use that. Would you move that out of the way, please? Yes, sir. You don't have to unplug it necessarily. Yeah, you have to. Okay. Okay. Just real quick. Court. One moment, Mr. Kent. Examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Hunter, you were the first person on the scene, is that correct? Yes, sir, that is. And I guess you had to knock on the door a few times in order for to get Heat to come to the door, is that correct? Yes, sir. And I think when you answer, I guess when he comes to the door, you see him and he's talking on a cell phone, correct? Yes, sir, that is. And, it, and at that time, he's actually talking to the 911 dispatcher, correct? Yes, sir. And then... Did you have him go out? I wasn't, I wasn't 100% sure when I was looking at the video. Did you have him come out, or did, did he come out and, and sit down? Well, I asked him to come out. Okay. And so when he comes out, you notice he's been injured at that point. Or did you, I think you asked him if he was injured, or you, you were able to ascertain yes, that he was injured, right? Yes. And did you have him sit down? Is that correct? Correct. Is that because you're you're looking out for his safety, and if somebody's been injured, you don't want them walking around and and possibly fainting and doing things like that. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So you were having him get on the or sit down, try to calm down, because at this point you're trying to get some information from him about what happened. Correct? Yes, sir. And I notice you you ask him what happened. He's telling you that. I guess somebody had, had shot him. Is that correct? Said that again, sir? You were asking what happened, and he said somebody had shot him. Is that correct? I don't recall that, sir. Okay. He didn't tell you somebody had shot him? Didn't you ask him what happened, and he said that his stepdaughter had shot him? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And I think it took you a couple times because you had asked, what does your son look like? And, you, and it took you a couple, you had to think, to realize that it's actually a, a stepdaughter, not a stepson. Would that be correct? Yes, sir. And this is all on, I mean, this is all on video, correct? I mean, we just saw, we just saw the video. This is all on video. Yes, sir. That's what we would call a body cam, right? Correct. Okay. And you have certain policy and procedures with the body cam, correct? Yes, sir. And I, and I think you had said when you first uh, got up on the stand, you were asked about what, why you wear a body cam or, or what, the, what it is, and you said any time that you have interaction with the public. Yes, sir. And it's for your safety and it's also for the safety of, of the, uh, I guess, the public, correct? Yes, sir. And you have certain policies that say, as long as you're out there, you can't turn that body cam off, correct? Yes, sir. And that's a Rankin County Sheriff Department policy, right? Yes, sir. And that's, that's I guess, the if, if you're wearing a body cam, you are, I guess, and you're with the Sheriff Department, everybody follows the same procedures. Yes, sir. May I beg the court's indulgence?
no further questions. Where are you at? <laughs> Dippy Lewis, uh, Mr. Camp, which is asking about body cams. Um, do you know whether investigators, in your personal knowledge, do you know whether the investigators with uh, the Rank County Sheriff's Office wear body cams? I don't know that, sir. Okay. And uh, the gentleman who showed up out there with the uh, white shirt on, who was that? Investigator Burnell. Okay. Court, court said, Nothing right here. By this way, the stand be excused by the state. Yes. By the defense. Yes, sir. All right, you can stand down. I'll approach real quick. Um, I'm going to have the bailiff show you back, take a restroom break real quick. Just so you all know, we, we do our best not to go past 530, okay? While you're back there, you'll need to go on ahead and start talking among yourselves about a very important topic, uh, lunch tomorrow, okay? Um, you, you have two options. Uh, and and do, not, do not sleep on the first option, okay? The, the jail is serving pork chops tomorrow, okay? And I don't mind telling you, I'm going to eat a pork chop tomorrow, okay? If you don't want the pork chop, we have a very limited menu available from Nukes, okay? Uh, I'm going to hand these to the bailiff when he takes you back there. Go on ahead and use the restroom, but we may need to make a decision tonight about lunch tomorrow. Just for your knowledge, we're going to work through, okay? Uh, the lawyers are on their own for food, but the, the court will uh, court will feed y'all, okay? So y'all go ahead and start having that discussion among yourselves about tomorrow. Use this time for a restroom break. Everyone remain seated while the jury exits. Bailiff, let me know when they're done with the restroom. Okay. All right, everyone else will be in. It's 4:20. We'll be in recess till 4:30. State, go on there and get your next witness in on the front row. Do any independent research and please don't go home and get on social media, okay? Uh, with those three admonitions, I'm going to turn you all over to the bailiff, but I do need you all to make a decision as to lunch tomorrow because I have to order tonight, okay? Uh, if you're vegan or you have some special issue, um, you can pack lunch. Like, I, I, these are the options that I have, okay? So just before you all leave tonight, please make that decision. If you want to bring something, we'll provide you a, a refrigerator, we'll provide way that we can. I'm going to ask y'all to be back in the jury room at 845 tomorrow, ready to go at 845. Everyone remain seated while the jury exits. Mr. Bailiff, take charge of the jury.
All right, I'm going to ask with the jury to be back at 8.45 tomorrow. I'm going to ask the attorneys from both sides to be here at 8.30, ready to go. All right, along with your witnesses. We're moving along at a pretty fair clip, so if the defense has any witnesses, they may want to have them ready after lunch tomorrow. All right? Anything further from the state? Uh, no, sir. Anything further from the defense? No. Yeah. All right. Sure, I apologize. I do have one other thing, uh, just to make sure that the witnesses, I mean, the, the people that have been in the courtroom know that they're not allowed to discuss the testimony with potential other witnesses. No, there should be no discussion about uh, testimony with witnesses with, with, from either side. All right. Anything further from the state? No, sir. From the defense? No, sir. All right. We'll stand in recess till 830 tomorrow morning. Thank you.